How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to compare the Sony a7 IV's 120 frames per second and 1080p shot in full frame versus APS-C mode to see if there's a noticeable difference. So let's jump right into it. See, I've been asked a few times regarding the 120 frames per second and the Sony a7 IV and the crop mode versus the full frame mode because the 4K60 is crop mode in the camera. So I thought it'd be good to show you guys the comparison of it just to see if there's a noticeable difference. I've gone ahead before and you know compared the 4K crop mode versus not crop mode in a previous video. So I thought it'd be cool to do the 120 frames per second since it's shot in 1080p to see if it's really that noticeable, if it's worth it or is it not. Just to you know, answer the questions that you guys have asked me before. So for me personally, what I'm gonna be looking for is just to see if the compression of it really matters. Does it make a difference? Is it even worth it? Or should you just kinda shoot it in the full frame mode and just, you know, suck it up that you don't have that extra focal length because I know you can get that extra focal length with doing the crop mode. So that's basically what I'll be looking for for mine. And if it really just, the sharpness becomes too noticeable that it just kind of gets too pixelated or what. So we're gonna go ahead and take some slow motion footage here with the Sony a7 IV and see what we find out. here today is quite horrendous so we're just trying our best but it's kind of cool because it'll add a lot of motion without having to do too much since the wind is just making everything else move with the slow motion it'll be stellar done with the footage you've seen some of it already but I'm gonna go ahead home to review it give you my final thoughts and then really kind of analyze it in Premiere Pro and that way I can see if it really matters if I can pixel peep a little bit maybe it makes a difference or not but if you couldn't tell the difference whenever you're watching it on your phone then you kind of have your answer on that end but it's always good to go ahead and you know get more technical when it comes down to it anyways off to home bye Uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to just hang out with my family, guys. Paparazzi, please. You know, like I'm just, I'm not, I'm not Kanye or anything like that. You know what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not Harry Potter guy or whatever his name is. Please let me, let me be, guys. I'm just trying to live my life. I love the fans, but today is just family day. Sorry, guys. And I'm back in the office, reviewed some of the footage to kind of talk a little bit more about my final thoughts of it, what I noticed more up close and personal on the screen, just so that way, in case it helps you out and maybe you didn't notice it yourself, might help you out now. One of the main things that I noticed, honestly, the quality of the full frame to the crowd mode wasn't that bad, to be honest. I didn't really see like an obvious comparison that I would be like, this is definitely noticeable that it lower quality. I did notice that it's just because it is 1080p and it's, you know, the, the A7 IV doesn't shoot that 4K 120. It's gonna be a little bit lower 
quality perhaps uh, when you're upscaling it to 4K how I usually do it just because I usually use a 4K timeline. But other than that, there wasn't any noticeable differences that I was like, this is definitely way better to do full frame versus crop mode for myself. Um, maybe you saw something different. I would love to know your thoughts on that and to leave a comment down below and maybe we can discuss a little bit further, you know, your findings that I maybe missed when it came down to the differences or maybe the similarities. But the cool thing is it's it gives you a little bit of that extra focal range if you're wanting to shoot that APS-C mode when it comes down to the 120 frames per second and 1080p. I use a S and Q mode. I've done videos about that and the reasoning why, because then I can shoot the 10 bit color because that's the only way you can do it with the a7 IV, sadly. So that's something that just, just in case you needed to know more details about that, that's how I do it. So it shoots a little bit less, I guess, file sizes. The bigger ones, it'll be 89 versus like the, I guess 100 megabits per second or something. I can't remember what it is with the normal mode, I guess, with the a7 IV. But other than that, I thought it was pretty great. I mean, that's kind of cool in my honest opinion because I now I know that I can shoot APS-C mode without losing too much quality, even at 120 frames per second, if I want to do it just with this camera and I'm on the run with just one camera. Because most of the time I tend to shoot my A7S 3 with video, but sometimes when I'm running gunning kind of style, the, the cool little switch of this camera that's been one of my most favorite things that this camera has, has made it easier to just go back and forth with photo to video mode and to my SNQ mode to just do 4K 24, 120 frames per second and 1080p and the photo mode just by just switching it across because I set it for my custom one button. So that gives me the, the kind of peace of mind that I can just customize another button to do the APS-C mode just all across for all three. So that way, if I want to do that and have that extra punch, I'm not losing quality of my video. So that's something that I found out with this video myself. So in case you were wondering if the 1080p 120 frames per second full frame versus crop mode was going to hurt the quality, to me, it wasn't anything noticeable. I think you'd be fine. The only reason you're going to know that it's APS-C mode versus full frame is because one, the difference of focal range like kind of how close it is now because i'm doing the same thing from the same spot to well i kind of let you know so that there you go that that's pretty much it but other than that i i 100 percent think it's fine so if you have any aps-c mode lenses that you want to keep because you're having that 4k 60 crop and you're thinking well might as well just keep those you'll be fine using it for the 4k 24 frames per second as well with the 120 frames per second at 1080p I don't know why you would be upgrading to a full frame camera and just wanting to keep your APS-C lenses. I know they're cheaper, but in the long term, I do recommend just having full frame lenses that you can use as APS-C because I feel like you'll have just more out of your lens because you have bigger glass anyway. But that's just me. That's, that's just my opinion when it comes down to it. I've already invested enough into this full frame lineup that it just makes sense. And that's something that I would recommend you guys as well. But for the sake of the testing of this, I think it worked out. We've learned some good stuff today together. 120 frames per second and crop mode versus full frame works pretty great both ways. So now you know. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, share this video with a friend, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.